I am the product of teen pregnancy, and my parents broke up shortly after I was born. My mom's first husband was an emotionally and verbally hurtful person who she married when I was four and stayed with until I was 15. I have had to go to years of therapy to heal from the things that man made me believe about myself. Throughout my childhood, my dad was great, supportive, and fun, and a little hot-headed but not scary. I decided to move in with him and my stepmom for the majority of the time when I was 12, as the joint custody agreement my parents had let me choose at that age. I just needed to escape the difficult situation I was living in. I felt safe, finally, and hopeful. Then, a few years later, I felt like I had been dragged back into a different but similar difficult situation. My dad wasn't nearly as overt about it as my mom's ex, but there was always a comment here or there, or an explosive reaction that made me walk on eggshells around them. He would also routinely badmouth my mom to me, usually with sarcastic comments, which always made me feel like I was in the middle. As soon as I started to want control over parts of my life, it felt like a switch flipped. I felt like I had no real control over my life because he always had an opinion about what I should and should not do. And if I did anything wrong, it led to a huge reaction. I was shamed for costing too much, specifically related to medical bills, since I was pretty accident prone. I got grounded for normal kid things. I was a really good kid and never really did anything wrong. I got yelled at routinely and I was emotionally afraid of my dad. It got so bad that I moved out of his house and back in with my mom my senior year of high school to try to get away, and I rarely spoke to my dad until after I graduated college. We reconciled in 2020 after my stepmom finally snapped and asked for a divorce, and he started going to therapy and making amends to try and win her back. He took accountability for his actions towards me, and I felt like I got my real dad back. I forgave him, but I've kind of been waiting for the other shoe to drop. My stepmom did divorce him, and I found out later that she is now with her affair partner. While I do not condone cheating at all, the reason and way she cheated was textbook for an emotionally abused woman, so I don't blame her or hold any ill will towards her. I have two little sisters from him and my stepmom A, who is 12 years old, and B, who is 10 years old. They are the funniest, sweetest, craziest, most vibrant little humans I've ever met, and I love them to death. I have always had very strong mama bear instincts with my siblings, and they are very strong with those girls. I am also a mom now, and spent the five years prior to my baby being born healing from my childhood trauma so that I can break those cycles in my family, and my baby can grow up peacefully without any external chaos from his parents. But I still, to this day, am extremely triggered by loud noises and yelling. So we do not yell in our house, even though it can be very hard for me due to being yelled at my whole childhood. I also have anxiety and chronic pain conditions, both of which have been linked to high levels of cortisol in childhood and being in fight or flight mode. So I am in pain, basically, every day of my life. Since the divorce, my dad has been slipping back into his old ways yelling and blowing up at people when he feels they have wronged him, including my grandmother. He has gotten so far into conspiracy theories in the past few years that he tends to be a bit paranoid that everyone is talking badly behind his back to get one over on him somehow. Bottom line, last week, my stepmom asked me to talk to A because she is having trouble with my dad, and she knows I've been there. His response when my stepmom told him via text was to accuse her of trying to create a paper trail to establish him as a terrible, violent, dangerous guy in order to keep the girls from him, which is just utter nonsense. I had a phone call with A, and the whole time I just heard little me talking about how I felt when I was her age. She's scared to talk to him about her feelings because of how he might react. She's afraid of hurting his feelings because he might blow up on her. She also feels like she doesn't want to try anything new, such as sports or activities, because if she ends up hating it, he won't let her quit. Apparently, he made a comment to her at one point, I've got a lot riding on you, and she started crying and said, I'm just a kid, I don't even know what to do with that. I feel like I am truly the only one who can save my sisters from experiencing the same traumas as I did and save my dad from himself. 
I love my dad, and he clearly loves all of us. He just doesn't understand how these things are hurting us. I have never even opened up to him about exactly how it felt growing up, because until now, I was also afraid of him blowing up at me. So how do I convince my dad to end this cycle and not traumatize my sisters the way I was? How do I approach him in a way that he will actually hear me, rather than pushing back and being defensive or thinking it's just a grand conspiracy to try and frame him as a bad guy for some reason? I have to address this and advocate for the girls. I just can't figure out the best way to do it so he will listen. Any advice is appreciated. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. My stepmom knows everything. She got married to him a few years before he made the change, and I was living with them both at the time this happened. She tried her best to mediate, but he was being horrible to her too. She is very adamant that she'll be damned before she lets that happen again. She just didn't feel as empowered with me because she was younger, and dad apparently gave her the whole you're not her real parent type of vibe when she tried to talk to him about it in private. And the thing is that when he's not being defensive, he is a great dad. That's what's so heartbreaking about the whole thing. And in 2020, when he cleaned up his act, he was a great dad for a whole year. So I know he's capable of it. He just won't take any accountability these days. And now it's hurting another one of his daughters and it's breaking my heart. Comment two, you need to have a real conversation with your dad, but it's going to be tough. You can't sugarcoat it. He's slipping back into old patterns and it's hurting your sisters. Approach him calmly, but firmly. Make it clear you're not attacking him. You're trying to protect your sisters. Share how they feel and connect it to your own experiences, but keep it focused on them. Suggest he consider therapy. It might help him see his behavior and its impact. And if he starts to blow up or deflect, don't let him derail the conversation. Stay firm and stick to the point. If he can't hear you, it might be worth considering how you and your sisters interact with him moving forward. Ultimately, he has to take responsibility for his actions, but you can guide him in the right direction. Now, for the update. I'm back with some more updates on the situation with my dad and my younger sisters. A lot has happened recently, so grab a snack and get ready for a long read. A few days after my last update, my stepmom called me freaking out. She said that A has been acting really withdrawn lately and has even been skipping school. I decided to visit my dad's house to check in on her and see what was going on. When I got there, I found B in the living room watching TV, but she seemed really distracted. I asked her if she knew where A was, but she just shrugged and said she didn't know. Not sure what to do, I headed to A's room and knocked on the door, but there was no answer. I tried the handle, and luckily, it was unlocked. Stepping inside, I found A lying on the bed with her headphones on. She looked up, surprised but annoyed to see me. I noticed she had a stack of books on her bed and a journal open filled with drawings and notes. The vibe felt heavy, and I could tell something was off. I asked her if everything was okay, but she quickly brushed me off. I sat on the edge of the bed trying to talk to her, but she just rolled her eyes and turned away. It was clear that she was overwhelmed, so I decided it was best to talk to my dad about the situation. I found him in the kitchen, pacing and on the phone. He sounded really stressed out. When he saw me, he hung up quickly and asked what was wrong. I brought up A's behavior and shared my concerns about her well-being. He immediately got defensive and accused me of meddling. I tried to explain, but he interrupted me and raised his voice. Things got heated fast, and he stormed out of the kitchen, slamming the door behind him. At that point, I knew we would have to confront him during a family dinner that was planned for the weekend. This dinner included my dad, stepmom, A, B, and me, with everyone expected to attend. On the day of the dinner, I was getting ready to address the situation directly. The vibe was tense as we all sat down to eat, and my dad seemed really distracted. I finally got the courage to speak up and mention the issues with A and how we all needed to support her. My dad's face turned red and he dismissed my concerns, claiming A was just being dramatic. A overheard this and reacted by saying she felt trapped and under pressure. My dad, caught off guard, lashed out at A and accused her of being ungrateful. I jumped in to defend A, 
which only made my dad explode in anger. Feeling cornered, A left the table in tears, and B followed her, worried. After that dinner from hell, we decided to take action. We planned to wait until my dad was alone later that evening to confront him. I found him in the living room still fuming about the dinner. I confronted him about his behavior and how it affects A and B. He was taken aback and started yelling about respect and authority. I felt a surge of boldness and threatened to go completely no contact if things didn't change. He looked shocked, momentarily speechless, and then angrily dismissed my threat. I walked out, determined to follow through with my words. A few days later, I got a text from A asking if we could meet to talk. We met at a local diner where she revealed her plans to move in with our mom. I was shocked but also relieved that she felt she had the option. Unfortunately, my dad later found out about A's plans and confronted me in a rage. I stood firm, knowing I had taken a stand for my sisters. That's all for now. I'm just hoping A and B can find some peace, and I'm here for them no matter what. Edit. A has officially moved in with my mom, and B has decided to join her. They both feel relieved and are slowly starting to heal. My stepmom has also left my dad, which surprised everyone. I'm focusing on being there for my sisters, and things are looking up for all of us. Am I the idiot for feeling like I'm in a corporate job instead of a relationship with my fiance? Recently, my 28-year-old relationship with my fiance, who is 27 years old, has hit quite a few bumps, which I am not sure how to handle moving forward. But I believe they are ruining her perspective of me. We've been together for a year and a half, engaged for three months, and we've been living together for over a year now. I would like to say, I firmly believe she is a great woman and definitely the woman I want to marry and have children with. This is why I was confident in my decision to move in together and get engaged. Nothing felt rushed or premature on both ends, according to her, at least. The main issue is she hates telling me what she expects to be done, as she sees it like nagging, and something a mother would do. Due to some traits of Asperger's on my side, I haven't been officially diagnosed. I find it very hard to read social nuances and implications about what people want. I prefer instructions, and that's how I've always operated with her as well. I would like to point out that I am not expecting her to handhold me through the entire process. But if you want dishes put away in a certain way or laundry folded a certain way, I expect that to be said. Her argument is that it's not her way, but it's the right way, and that I should have that figured out by now. Naturally, as a man, my way of handling chores is as fast and as efficient as possible. However, I will admit I sometimes lack in the quality department, something I've put effort into working on. Chores aside, since I am relatively adaptable in that regard, I picked it up quite fast. The other part of the issue is she says my words don't match my actions. For example, I've always supported her in all her endeavors. She recently picked up massaging and was very nervous and anxious about whether she'd do it well. She proposed trying it out on me, but I have told her before that I really dislike being massaged, and internally, I felt she would get mad at me if I moved around or was uncomfortable, which would make her further anxious and possibly upset with me. This, however, meant for her that I only support her morally, and when push came to shove, I wasn't there for her. Now, I understand that perspective, and I most definitely should have just sucked it up, but I thought we would never make the other person do something they do not completely want. Another similar example would be our most recent celebration, where I messed up the hour of the screening for a movie projection, and we were about 30 minutes late for the start of the movie. Initially, we laughed it off, but as the day went on, I felt like this bothered her greatly. While I saw it as just an innocent mistake anyone could make, I've booked movies before, and we've seen them before as well. This is the first time this has happened, but she sees it as me being unserious and immature. I feel like I am stuck in this loop where I try to do what she wants, think for her and the family, and then act upon it, but oftentimes, it's not what she expects, Therefore, we're back to square one. It feels like we're communicating on different wavelengths, and I have no idea how to synchronize them. If I do it, I'm doing it wrong, and she'd prefer to do it instead of explaining. If I don't do it, 
I'm not mature enough, and it feels like all my effort in this relationship is in vain because nothing is ever good enough. Again, I am completely hat in hand here. I am not blaming her, and I am willing to change and work on it. I just really have no idea what and how. It feels like I have to be permanently locked in, like a corporate job with an executive boss, rather than living a life with the woman I love. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you can fix it by taking responsibility for the things that you need help with. Being neurodivergent doesn't mean that everyone else around you has to fill in for you. It means that you do the work to find out how to adjust your environment to fill in your own gaps. I would 100% immediately forget the time for something, and it's double ridiculous because my brain fills in the time so that there's no uncertainty to make me double check the time and I'm just late by an hour or a day or a week. But I know this about myself, so it is 100% my responsibility to find a way to fill that gap. I have to record the time in my phone immediately so that I can set notifications. I'll still be driving to an appointment and have the wrong day. But that's not anyone else's fault if I don't use the tools available to me. If she's asking you to correctly complete chores that you should already know how to do, why don't you know how to do them? Other commenters are giving you a pass, but I've seen people do some nonsense that makes me wonder whether they just crawled out of a dirt hole. So I'm not giving you the benefit of the doubt that she's wrong. When two people come together, it's unlikely that you'll do everything the same way. So we have to defer about a lot of things if the other person is better at something or feels strongly about it. This is just the nature of living together. Why would she give you a pass about being sloppy? Comment two. This may sound spiritual, but it sounds like your energy isn't very confident when you stand up for yourself. She probably gets frustrated because she feels like you're half committed to your own feelings. For example, with the massage thing, it seems like you didn't manage to actually convince her you were genuinely uncomfortable with it. From her perspective, she might have just thought that you kind of weren't into it and decided to deny her request because of a minor inconvenience. Part of communicating is being able to clearly talk through your side and also question where they are coming from. I could be wrong, right? But it sounds like you guys haven't actually had very direct conversations about things and you go based off of her vibe. Next time, take a deep breath, look her in the eye, and explain what you are thinking and your intentions. Speak with conviction, and you will be surprised how well this can really resonate with her, in a good way. She will quickly realize exactly where you're coming from, and the communication will be clear and heard. Also, when she tries to do things for you, tell her, no, I've got this handled, and then try it again. Everyone makes mistakes, she doesn't actually expect perfection from you. If this is the extent of your relationship problems though, dude, you are in the clear. Now, for the update. After a couple of weeks, I noticed Olivia was still upset about the anniversary dinner thing. We had a long talk about it one night and she mentioned needing more support from me. I was trying to get what she meant and asked her for examples. She brought up how I didn't want to practice massage, which bothered her. I explained my discomfort with being massaged, but agreed to try it again. We set a date to practice at home, and I tried to be more open-minded. I brought home a massage oil to help set the mood, hoping it would lighten things up. That weekend, we also went to a wedding together, which was supposed to be fun. At the wedding, we danced, but had a miscommunication about taking a break. I thought she wanted to sit down. She thought I was ignoring her. She walked off to find a friend, leaving me confused on the dance floor. I found her chatting with a friend, and she looked frustrated. I went up to her to ask what was wrong, but she brushed me off. Later that night, we argued in the car on the way home about the wedding. Olivia accused me of not caring about her feelings at the wedding. I tried to explain, but felt we were going in circles. The next week, we went to a family dinner at my parents' house. My dad asked when we were getting married again, trying to lighten the mood. Olivia looked tense but forced a smile, saying she didn't know yet. I felt the tension and tried to change the subject, but it was awkward. My mom made a toast about love and partnership, and Olivia didn't raise her glass. 
I noticed her sitting quietly, and my brother Jake shot me a concerned look. After dinner, I pulled Olivia aside to ask if everything was okay. She said she felt pressure from my family about our engagement. We decided to take a break from discussing marriage to ease the pressure. A few days later, Olivia suggested we go on a weekend trip to clear our heads. We booked a cabin in the woods, thinking it would help us reconnect. On the trip, we had some good moments, but still felt the underlying tension. One night, we sat by the fire talking, and I asked about her dreams for our future. She mentioned wanting to travel more, and I promised to plan something special. After getting back home, I planned a surprise trip for her birthday. I told her about the trip, and she seemed excited, but I could still sense hesitation. A week before her birthday, I overheard her talking to her sister about our relationship. I confronted her about it later, wanting to know what she meant. She admitted she felt conflicted about our timeline for marriage. We agreed to have a serious conversation about where we were heading. The day before her birthday, she showed me her travel magazine collection. We spent her birthday at a cozy restaurant, discussing our plans openly. To answer a few questions, we have been living together for over a year, and Olivia has been feeling pressure from my family about our engagement. She is still figuring out her feelings. Am I the idiot for staying in a marriage where my wife's jealousy is destroying our family? I am currently being falsely accused of infidelity by my partner of eight years. There is not, and never has been, any actual infidelity, physical or emotional, in this relationship, to my knowledge. However, throughout the relationship, I have regularly been accused of such behavior anyway, and never for any good reasons. My partner has always had some extreme jealousy and insecurity issues, and I know I have been much too tolerant of them. This time, the accusations center around some scratches on my neck that she noticed upon coming home from work yesterday. I work from home and cannot explain the scratches. I was just as surprised to see them as she was. I'm not sure if I scratched myself, but she claims that is not possible because I am a nail biter. My only other explanation is that I might have been scratched by the corner of her daughter's glasses. Just minutes before the scratches were discovered, both of her children had just been playfully fighting with each other over who gets to hug me first, as they do every day when they come home from school. The daughter was on that side of me, had her glasses on, and the glasses would be at the correct height to match the scratches. She was holding on to me, with her head tucked in right around my neck where the scratches are, while trying to shove her brother away from me. It is the best explanation that I have, but of course, she is not buying it. While I don't have any concrete explanation for where the scratches came from, I certainly do know that they are not the female scratches that she adamantly claims they must be. I was home alone all day working, as I still was when they all came home, just like every other day. On top of this, she believes that I must be having an affair with my ex, who I have not seen or spoken to since we split 10 years ago. After we purchased our home together, I found out that my ex happens to live just a few blocks away from me. I only found this out a few years after we purchased this house because her son was playing around with Google Street View in our neighborhood, and I spotted her distinctive car in the driveway. However, I did not immediately disclose this information to my partner because it isn't any of her business, and I feared that she would make false accusations, exactly as she now has. She took pictures of my scratches for evidence and admitted to showing these to friends, who she claims all agree that these scratches can only be caused by a woman somehow scratching the front of my neck during the throes of passion. Then, she showed me a photo of my ex's house that I presume she took, stalking my ex. She also produced my ex's phone number. I don't even know where she got that or her address. She threatened to go talk to my ex, which of course I find completely mortifying. Now, she has gone to pick up the kids from school and inform them that she is leaving me over this. I am completely innocent, of course, and I am pretty sure the kids know that as well. This is not the first time they have heard their mother make false accusations like this, and they have come to my defense in the past. Last time, she came home to catch me on the phone with a woman who just happened to be my 73-year-old mother, 
and immediately jumped to conclusions. When the kids defended me, she just told them that they don't know what sort of secret life I might be leading. The kids just roll their eyes, but of course, this is all still incredibly hurtful to me. I have been nothing but good to this woman and her children for the entire eight years that we have been trying to be a happy family. I know that I have been too patient with her. Hurtful accusations in the past, hoping that she will grow emotionally and get beyond her trauma and insecurities. I would have married her by now if not for these continued trust and jealousy issues and all her toxic behavior that results from her wild imagination. I actually have been the victim of infidelity in my previous relationships, twice. That is what happened with the ex that she is now accusing me of having an affair with. My partner, on the other hand, does not really have such experiences. She often claims that her ex-husband cheated, but has also admitted previously that she only ever had suspicions about him rather than any concrete evidence or admissions of guilt. Seems like something of a pattern to me now. In my own youth, I made similar mistakes in past relationships. I had horrible insecurities myself from being cheated on and handled that poorly in a previous relationship. I learned this lesson myself decades ago. Having made such mistakes myself is the whole reason that I have been as patient with her issues over the years. I thought that she might heal over time, just like I did. I thought that all I had to do was just love her and the kids, provide a nice, happy life, and she would eventually grow emotionally. I don't know if she is projecting or just being unreasonable, but I'm at my wit's end. I am 100% innocent here, but can't possibly prove it and know that I should not even have to. So what do I do here? Just give up and let her wreck my life? Sell the house? I'm the primary breadwinner, making double what she does, and there is no way she can keep up the lifestyle that I provide for them. She's threatening to take the kids and leave our million dollar home that we have built together to go find some inadequate apartment to live in. If it was just her, I would let her go and cut my losses. But the kids are going to be absolutely miserable and probably hate me for something that I am not even remotely guilty of. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, we could probably guess the main reason for her past divorce. Nobody can live with someone who is always accusing the other of infidelity when it never happens at all. She needs professional help, maybe some psychiatric evaluation regarding her preoccupation with cheating. Unless there's professional help, I don't think there's much you can do if she can't handle you receiving any female calls. She's toxic. You are being emotionally abused here. Is your love for her strong enough to stay in this relationship and continue being accused of cheating forever? There's no end to it. You might want to take a break, live somewhere for a week or a month to evaluate yourself and your relationship. A little distance can provide perspective and give you time to clear your head. If you still want to continue this life, the kids will certainly be sad and they are the most innocent in this situation. But there's not much you can do. You can always check in on them and help if there's ever a breakup. Give them your number and assure them they can always contact you if they need help. Comment two, I know the feeling somewhat. I didn't want to be intimate and that turned into, I must be saving it for another person. I literally have our toddler with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week because I don't have friends or family to watch her. I work from home full time with my child too, so I don't leave the house other than for shopping on weekends. It's very isolating and lonely. He never shows affection. We hardly ever go out in public unless it's on vacation. It's usually just me and the kids doing things. I'm in shape and take care of myself, so I don't feel it's that. I always wonder if he's hiding things when he accuses me. I always have the option of going home, which is far away, but I stay for the kids. Other than his anger issues, he treats the kids well and they love him. It's been eight years and I feel like that's a long time to just walk away. I know he won't ever change. Now, for the update. I'm doing an update on this. It's been a little over a month since the accusation started. My partner accused me of cheating, which I never did. The scratches on my neck were from my partner's daughter's glasses during a playful moment. She refused to believe my explanation and took photos of the scratches. 
my partner threatened to confront my ex, which made me panic. The kids were told she was leaving me over these accusations. My partner started packing her things while I was at home working. I overheard her telling the kids that their dad was not trustworthy. I confronted her about that, trying to explain the situation. She yelled that I was manipulating her and continued to pack. The kids were confused and upset, asking why she was leaving. My partner took the kids to a family birthday party that weekend. I stayed home. I texted her during the party, trying to talk things through. She ignored my messages and posted pictures of the kids having fun without me. The next day, she came back home and told me she needed space. A few days later, she took the kids to stay at her sister's place. I didn't know when they would come back or if they would come back. I called her sister to check on them and she said they were fine. She mentioned my partner was upset but didn't provide details. One evening, I got a weird message from an unknown number. It had a photo of my partner with another man at a restaurant. The caption read, hope you're okay with this. I confronted my partner about the message when she got back home. She denied the whole thing, claiming it was a misunderstanding. I mentioned the photo, and she got defensive, insisting it was old. She then accused me of invading her privacy by checking her phone. I didn't check her phone. The message came to mine. The argument got worse, and she stormed out, taking the kids again. I reached out to her parents, hoping they could help fix things. They didn't know about the situation and seemed shocked by everything. I learned from her mom that she had been struggling with trust issues. My partner came back home a week later, looking exhausted. She told me she wanted to work on our relationship. We decided to take things slow. Edit. My partner has a history of being insecure and jealous. The kids are ages six and eight. The unknown number is still messaging. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.